As a result, Doppler effect always taught as observed frequency, equal to, the speed of waves plus or minus the speed of the receiver relative to the medium, times the emitted frequency, divided by, speed of wave plus or minus the speed of wave source relative to the medium. We can define the Doppler effect the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. An example of the Doppler effect in daily life we can easily observe is a race. So let's say you are watching a race from the roadside. And a rider passed you very fast. Because riders moving relatively fast towards you the motorcycle to you might sound something like this. So it starts at a high pitch and moves to a lower pitch even though it sounds the same pitch from the rider perspective the entire time. Now, to understand what Doppler effect really is, let's establish a relationship between this phenomenon and the quantity involved. In the first scenario, assuming there is a car emitting sound wave at a frequency of F0, and at a certain distance, we observe the sound wave from our position. We may conclude that we will observe the same frequency of F0, or on the other word we will get the signal wave every 1 over F0 second. As 1 over frequency is equal to period of oscillation, we can write 1 on F0 is equal to T0, T0 means period of oscillation in this condition. It must also be understood that the wavelength lambda is equal to the wave speed V times oscillation period T. Then, we will involve the Doppler effect to this scenario. At the simplest, let's add motion to this car. Now this car will travel at speed Vs towards the observer. Then look closely at the sound wave signal. Here, at any time T0, the car will emit a wave signal, and will travel at a distance of R1 at the same time. Where R1 here is equal to Vs times T0. Before any movement, we have wavelength lambda 0, is equal to the new wavelength lambda plus the distance R1. We can write lambda 0 as sound wave speed V times T0, then write lambda as sound wave speed V times period of time T. Because the oscillation period T is equal to 1 divided by frequency, we will obtain this, and with a small change we can find the Doppler formula for this scenario. Now we will move to the second scenario. We have the car move on the opposite direction. By using the same mathematical computation, we will get this formula. The first and second scenarios are relatively similar. Now we'll move on to the third scenario. This part is gonna be tricky. Let's suppose the car does not move, but the observer moves towards the car at speed V0. First we shall see the signal received by an observer before any motion. The distance between the signal is always lambda 0. But when traveling at speed V0, the observer receives the next signal at a distance R where he receives the previous signal. Here, the observer reaches distance R, while the signal is moving at a distance lambda at the same time t. Here time t is an observed oscillating sound wave period. By understanding this scenario, we can move to calculation. Here we have lambda 0 is equal to lambda plus r. Then we will write lambda 0 as the speed of sound wave times oscillation period t0. Lambda as the speed of sound wave times oscillation period t. Distance r is equal to the speed v0 times oscillation period t. Remember, because t is equal to 1 over f, we will get this new form. And by using simple mathematic operation, we get this part of Doppler effect formula. If the observer travels in the opposite direction, you can change the plus sign to the minus sign. And finally, by generalizing every form of all scenario of Doppler effect, we will get this formula.